Hey guys, what's going on? It's Noah and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to create a brand new listing on Amazon for your wholesale dropshipping business. The reason why you would wanna create your own listings is because you can make them your own. You can put your brand name as the actual manufacturer and this way it's a very cohesive experience for the customer. They're going to see your brand name in the buy box. They're also going to see you as the manufacturer and who the actual item is by. To give you a quick example, here you see this item, it's a bread box. Here you'll see the title and then you'll see who it's by. So Amazon associates that this item is made by this company. This is the brand that owns this item. Now in the buy box, you'll see that this is being sold by the same company. And also if you scroll down to where it says the manufacturer for the item, the same brand is listed. So from a customer's perspective, this is also very good for authority reasons because now they see that it's the same seller's name in all three places. And also if they wanna see more products by the same brand, they can just click this and Amazon is going to recommend them all of the other products made by this brand, which can potentially lead to a lot more sales. So there are a lot of tutorials on YouTube about how to create a listing on Amazon. This specific video is for wholesale dropshipping. I'm not gonna be going as in depth as someone who's doing private label, just because they're buying hundreds of units of inventory. I'm creating thousands of different listings. So not every listing is going to be perfect. I'm going to take the photos and the information that my suppliers give me, and I'm going to try and make the best listing I can. The very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna log into Seller Central. I know, shocker. And then from there, what you wanna do is you wanna hover over inventory, click add a product, and it's going to bring you up to this page. From this point, what you wanna do is instead of entering in a UPC or something to find a listing that already exists, you're going to go right here where it says create a new product listing, and you're going to click that. It's then going to bring you up to the classify page and we now need to find a category for our product. The way that we're going to do this is you can either go through here and you can try and find each subcategory for your item. The way that I like to do it and I think it's quicker is I just type in the search term for my item. So since I'm selling a bread box, I'm going to type in bread box. If I was selling headphones, I would type in headphones. If I was selling something, a funeral product, so I would type that in, et cetera, et cetera. And then you're going to press find category. Once you hit find category, you're going to select the best category for your item. So here, since I searched up bread box, there's only two ones that match and they're basically the same category. So I'm just going to select the bread box and I'm going to show you an example for other items. If you type in earbuds, you're gonna get a lot of different results. Just select the one that's the most relevant to your item. So you can go through the subcategories and you'll see this one is MP3 and MPA4 player accessories. If that doesn't really best describe your item, just choose the ones that best align with your item. The same thing when I type in funeral, you'll see that I get several categories that all say the same thing, but the subcategories are different and that can affect your item. So you wanna make sure that you're being very specific. Once you have selected an item, you're gonna be brought up to the listing creation template page. Here, you're going to see all of the things that are going to need to be put in, all the information that Amazon needs from you to create your listing. Whatever is highlighted in red is going to be required. This is going to be different depending on whatever category you're in. Since I'm listing a bread box, I don't need as much information, but if you're listing an electronic or a toy, Amazon might require some battery information or some other information for that listing. With most listings, you're going to need the product ID. The product ID is going to be the code or the unique identifier for your item. This is mostly going to be the UPC code. And where I get my UPC codes is from barcodemania.com. I have also bought them from Etsy. Amazon says that they require you to have one from GS1. Those can get very expensive. So I personally get mine from Barcode Mania and I have not had a problem with any of my listings. So once I buy them from barcodemania.com, I go back to Amazon and I copy and paste them and I select UPC. So just enter in the number for your UPC code and then you're done with this step. The next step is you're going to fill in the product name. This is going to be the title that all of your customers will see. So you'll see all of the different titles for the items. A very pro tip is for the search term that is the most necessary for your listing, put that in the beginning. So since I'm wanna be targeting bread box, that's going to be one of the first search terms I'm going to put in my title. A great reference for a title is you can just look at the titles of the best selling listings in the category that you're gonna be listing in and you can use those for inspiration, take some snippets, take some keywords from their titles and you can incorporate that into your title. So for a very basic title for my item, I just came up with this one, Metal Bread Box for Kitchen Counter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to copy and paste this. Now you can make this longer. Amazon does give you a lot of characters to work with. You just wanna be very descriptive 
and also you wanna incorporate a lot of key search terms. Now the next thing that we're gonna be filling out is the brand name. The brand name is where your company name is going to go. If you see another tab that says manufacturer, you can put your supplier's name there, but typically I will just put my name there as well. Some other information that you can fill out is you can just fill out the color, the color map, the size, and these are just some secondary info. These are not required for creating your listing, but they can help give customers more info. I'm going to be covering variations at the end of this just because it's a separate topic, but right now we're focusing on creating a single listing. So the next thing that we're going to focus on is the offer tab. Once you click that, you're going to see some information that you need to put in. What you really need to put in is you need to put in your price. So let's say I wanted to sell this for $50. The next thing that you want to focus on is the shipping template. Make sure that this matches the exact shipping template that you are going to use for the supplier because remember your metrics are key. And the next thing that we're going to be filling out is the condition. Make sure that you set this as new if your item is actually new. Then you want to put the quantity, whatever quantity you're setting it at. And the lastly, we want to fill out the handling time and you want to put the accurate or reflect the accurate amount of time that it's going to take for your supplier to ship out the item. The next thing that we're going to be filling out is the compliance tab. In the compliance tab, you can don't really have to fill out anything. What I normally fill out is I fill in the item weight. You can put the volume if your item holds stuff. And also if you have batteries, this is where you put in the battery information. But since I'm selling a bread box, none of this information is really crucial. I just want to reiterate that since I'm selling a bread box, that's why I'm not filling anything out. But if you were selling an item with batteries or if any of these things had to do with anything, such as the 65 warning from California, that's where you would fill out all of this information. So the next tab that we're going to be focusing on is the images tab. This is a very crucial tab because the pictures are one of the first things that the customer sees and it's going to make or break your listing. For the main image, your picture should have a white background. If you go on any listing on Amazon, everything has a white background. This makes your listing blend in and it also makes it look better to the customer. The way that I personally get white backgrounds for my pictures is I use Photoshop. Now you can use Photoshop if you have it and if you know how to do it. If not, then you can use some tools. I know eBay has a tool where they allow you to get the white background, so you can use that for your Amazon pictures. You can also pay someone on Fiverr to do it, and also what you can do is you can take the picture from your supplier, and you can ask them if they have it with a white background. Sometimes you might not see it on their website, but I urge you to contact them and ask them if they have any photos. A lot of the times they'll have secondary photos that they do not upload onto their website right away. I'll also just say that you want to make sure that the pictures for the item that you're going to be uploading are going to be good, high quality photos. If you're going to be uploading an item with terrible photos, then you might want to order the item yourself and take some good photos because if you're going to have bad photos, it's not really worth listing. So the next thing that we're going to be working on is the key product features. Now for the key product features, these are very important for your listing and the way that I go about it is I'll look at listings in the same category that I want to list my item in. So here I want to sell bread boxes. I'm going to go to the listings for the top selling items in bread box and see what they're doing and look how they're putting their product features. Once I see how they're doing it, I'm then going to go back to my manufacturer's website and I'm going to look for five features that I can highlight for my item. So here I have my bread box and what I like to do is I like to take the key feature and I want to put it in all caps and I want to highlight it. And then after that, I'm going to write two sentences or a sentence that's going to support why this is such a key feature. For my specific item, I read everything here and I took out these are the key features. It's a metal bread box, so it's not going to easily be damaged. Then also it keeps your bread fresh. That's what bread boxes are for. It's easy to use. It has a really good handle for that. Also, it's good for perfect kitchen decor. So I might put perfect farmhouse decor and you can also just put in other features and then also it fits in any kitchen. So these are five great features that highlight to the customer why they should buy it. Again, my key product features method is I scour my competitors, I see what they're saying. You can even copy and paste it and work in your specific item details in there, but use their wording if you're really having that much trouble. Or you can just go ahead, look on your competitors or look on your supplier's website and take the information there. And then again, just highlight it and make sure that you clearly express why this feature is a key feature. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is the product description, which we're going to fill out right here. Now I want to show you two different product descriptions. Here you have one that is literally just two sentences and it's all mushed together. The customer can't see it and it's not really laid out that well. The next one is right here where you see that everything is spaced out nicely and it's easier for the customer to go from different point to point to point and it's much easier to read. 
the reason that this is like this and this one is like this is because Amazon requires that if you want to use spaces or if you want to include bold text, that you need to write it out in HTML style. To give you an example, if I were to go ahead and I were to copy and paste this into Amazon, or even if I were to just put spaces right here in between the sentences that I wanted spaces, even if I were to just copy and paste it like this, Amazon is still going to make sure that it looks like this. The way that you get it to look like this is by including HTML text. So you'll see right here, based off of this description, this is actually going to come out looking like this. What you're going to want to do is you're gonna to go to Google and you're gonna type in HTML preview and you're going to click the link that says online HTML editor.net. What this is going to bring up is it's going to bring up an HTML editor. So while you're working on your HTML text, you can see what your description is going to look like while you're working on it. So in order to get text to be bold, what you're going to want to do is you're going to do open bracket and then you're going to do B and then you're going to do close bracket before the phrase that you want to be bold. And then after that phrase, you're going to do open bracket space forward slash B and then you're going to do the close bracket and that's going to give you bold text. So to give you an example, what I would do is I would do open bracket B close bracket. Then I'm going to put my phrase that I want bold and then I'm going to do open bracket space forward slash B and then I'm going to do close bracket and you'll see that the word test is in bold and then again I'm just going to delete it so it looks good again and once I delete it you'll see that everything is back to normal. The next thing that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how to get a line break in between sentences or paragraphs. So the way that you're going to do that is you're going to do open bracket then the letters BR then a space and then forward slash and then you're going to do close bracket. The reason that I wrote this HTML code twice is this gives me two separate lines in between these texts. So since if I were to delete one, now you'll see that I have one less space. So by including that, I now have a space in between these two texts. Once this is done, I'm just going to take this with everything with the bold and also with the HTML for the spaces. And I'm going to go to my product description and I'm just going to paste it. Now I know this one's for a soap dispenser, but again, you would do this for any item and this would work on any single product description. So now that we've done it like that, it's going to come out looking like this with the different spaces. You can even bold certain words to highlight different features, to put emphasis on anything. So that's how you get your product description to look really good. The last thing that we really need to focus on are the search terms. The search terms are the keywords for your listing. This is how Amazon is going to rank and index and is going to know what your item is. So these are the relevant search terms for your items that customers are going to use for your listing. So you'll see right here, you have intended use, target audience. These are not really that important. You can fill it out. I usually leave them blank. And the reason being that these don't really help Amazon determine your item. These right here, the search terms are the most important part. So obviously you want to include your most important one. So I'm going to put bread box and then I might even put it without the space just to cause it probably gets searched like that. And you want to keep on doing this and Amazon gives you 250 characters for your keywords. Now a little trick if you're having trouble finding keywords is you can go back to Amazon and Amazon, since they're a search engine, they have all the relevant search terms for your item. So if I just put a space after bread box, it shows me that customers are searching bread box airtight, bread box farmhouse, Breadbox stainless steel, Breadbox white, Breadbox wood. So I can go back to my listing and I can include that in the back end. So we're going to have Breadbox farmhouse. And this, since this is a metal Breadbox, we're going to put Breadbox metal. You can do this so on and so forth. And you can even get more keywords by just including bread and see what comes up bread knife. So you can just put up bread bin and other search terms like that until you have maxed out all of your keywords. So the last page, we have the more details here. You're going to just fill in the item weight again. So we have weight Then you can even fill in the shipping weight. If you know it, then you can also fill in the package dimensions. So on the bottom, you'll see you have the item dimensions here. You're just going to fill out how big the item is. Then you have the package dimensions, how much, how, how big it's going to be when the item is actually packed up. And once you fill in all of the relevant information for your listing and your listing is basically done, then you're going to hit save and finish. And within 15 minutes, Amazon is going to index your listing and they're going to have it being uh, featured on their Amazon platform. So the last thing I want to talk about is how do you create variation listings? The way that you can create variation listings is you'll see right here, it says variation theme. So you need to select the theme for your variation. If you have different colors, you're going to select a different color. If you have color and different item display height, you would select this, so on and so forth. If you have different material, you would select this, different scent, this, different size. So let's say I have different size. You then need to fill out the different sizes. So I would have one, then I would have two, 
then I would have three, and let's say that was it. I have three sizes for my variations. I then would need to put UPC codes for the variations, select the product ID type, which is gonna be UPC. Then the condition is going to be new for all three of them. And then you can put the price for all of them and the quantity, and then you can even put your seller SKU. Now, since you filled out all of this information here, you no longer need to put in the product ID right here. And you also do not need to fill out the offer page. The only thing that you would need to fill out on the offer page is the shipping template and also the handling time because we filled in all of the information for the price and everything right here. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that video and found that it was a helpful video. I'm going to try and push out more content. This has been an insane game changing strategy in my business because when you create your own listing, you then go ahead and you can basically put in PPC, put money into that listing, then you can brand it, rank it higher, and you don't have to worry about competition just jumping on left and right because it's all your own uh, UPC code, it's your own brand. And then also, once you go ahead and you brand it, you build it up, then you can even turn it into an Amazon FBA. And since we're doing this for a thousand listings, you're bound to find some winner listings. So this has been game changer in my business. So thanks for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to go ahead and smash the like button or you can go ahead and you can click it like a normal human being. Also, if you did enjoy the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Mm -hmm.